I've set up the materials that matter. Um, what will be also quite interesting later on is to actually um, uh, select the materials for the light shelves and play around with the reflectivity of those. But we're going to do a, um, a daylight factor calculation without any light shelves first. Okay, now I'm going to back, back into my plan view. I'm going to turn the analysis grid back on. Still save the information. Um, we have all the material set up. The um, analysis grid templates are closed off. Uh, if you wonder how to how did I turn off the cameras that are usually in this view, the cameras are all created on a, on a separate zone, which is called OpenGL views. So you see if I turn this back on, um, you can see all the cameras, but that's usually confusing unless you want to actually move them. So I'm going to just turn it off. It doesn't mean the cameras are still there. Right? We still have that. And we have our view from, from earlier. Um, I'm actually going to create a um, a new view. Um, what I want to what I want to have is I want to be able to have a plan view because that's kind of the best way to look at this daylight distribution. I'm going to um, go to my visualization settings uh, um, and I'm going to go to the section plane. You know, I want to have you know. I don't want to have one like that, but I want to have a plan section. So I'm going to Z axis and um, I'm going to turn off turn off the uh, sun path. That's not important at the moment. Um, actually, I'm also going to turn off the shadows because they're also not important. So maybe this is a nice uh, maybe this is a nice view. Um, when you go to the visualization settings, um, you can move the height of the section plane. I would certainly cut through a window um, and probably keep it like that, so it looks. Um, we can we should make a view. We're gonna make a new camera out of this. Okay, so now we have, you know, this is basically saved the setting, e including the cutting plane. And I also actually want to have a plan view. So I'm going to make that a new camera as well. And so I have my little perspective and I have a plan view. OK, now I've set up the materials. I put the analysis grid in place. I'm ready to do a calculation. Uh, we're going to do, um, you go back to the analysis grid tab here and you select lighting levels as the calculation and you just hit perform calculation and now we're going to have to go through this um, couple of steps. We want to calculate natural light levels. We want it to be over the analysis grid so we hit next. Uh, precise precision average so we're going to actually keep it keep it where it is high. Uh, this is the design sky illuminance so this is a depending on where you are geographically and uh, there's different ways to calculate it this is the the brightness of the sky in foot candles in this case you just click calculate it for me and use either either formula for our purpose it doesn't matter the um, the way that they're distributing the sky illuminance is there's different ways of how you can calculate this we're going to use the uh, recommended setting the overcast sky condition so now this is the, the worst case scenario. It's an overcast sky. This is not a bright sunny sky. So this will uh, be important to remember, especially when you turn on light shelves. Um, and they, may not, they may not increase the amount of illumination. It has to do with the fact that you, we're not talking about a sunny, um, a sunny um, sky condition. We're talking about the worst case. Daylight factors are important to know for the worst case. So. Um, Window cleanliness, 0 0.9 is average. Um, this, you know, if you have dirty windows, you have less light, kind of logical. Um, I'm going to turn this one on, on as well. That uh, includes the internal reflections, regularly compliance mode, and now we have everything. Now we have, you know, we hit OK. Um,
when you have changed some of the geometry, um, it asks you to recalculate the interzonal adjacencies. That's okay. We're just gonna um, hit okay. Now it's starting to calculate. Depending on your processor speed and depending on your uh, amount of cells, this may take uh, a little while. You can see the progress. I'm gonna stop the recording now and I'm gonna turn it on in a little in a little while, so you don't have to watch this. The calculation should look something like this. As you can see, the program is starting at the bottom and then working its way up. It's going line by line <coughs> and slowly the color will change. We're going we're gonna to get a, a better reading once this is actually completed. <coughs> and then we can twe tweak the, um, the colors to, to, see, um, to better see what's going on. Okay, almost done. Okay, so now we have the um, um, distribution of daylight in the space at the um, at the desk level. And you can see um, if you actually try to make sense of the colors, uh, we have this kind of red uh, orange here. So that's a daylight factor of about. 10, 12, 14, um, and it drops off to 0 0.8 in the back. So one thing that um, is not so good is there's, I mean, the scale goes up to 20%, but there's nowhere near 20% in this, in this model. So we may want to play around with um, what range we're actually showing. Um, so if you go to data and scale under the um, analysis grid, you can see that it sets a minimum 0 0.8 and a maximum at 20.8. So I would, I would say, you know, what if we actually make this uh, 15? What? Okay. So that that you know that changes the uh, the now it basically makes 15 yellow and uh, 0 0.8 blue. You know, and the the example in this um, in this model is not you know not very surprising. Uh, you have a lot of light at the at the uh, at right at the window, and then it drops off. Um, the columns do have a significant impact, as you can see, and um, it's not necessarily going to be that interesting to just look at this model, but it will be very interesting to compare now this uh, fenestration with other fenestrations. For example, if we, um, you know, we can see that um, if I actually close this off, uh, well, I can actually go to the um, the other view. You see, I have a, um, you know, my window is only going up to about eight feet, and there's another two feet of solid panel. Now it would be interesting to see if we're actually taking this window surface and moving it up so that the top of the window is at 10 feet above the, uh, the floor. What kind of difference would that make in terms of the data distribution? All right, same amount of um, square foot of windows, but all the way at the top. And we can we can uh, you know, we can test um, if we have a fixed amount of you know windows. Is there any are there any other types of distribution that we can use to optimize the 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 distribution in the in the space? So as often, it's better to use Ecotect to compare two different or several different options to each other as opposed to just looking at one option by itself and trying to make sense of that. Uh, we can do this now again with uh, with light shelves turned on to see what the difference is, whether there's any, whether it's just darker in the foreground or whether there's actually an increase in, in the back. So you guys should um, run this again with um, some modification. It could be a different uh, location of the glass. It could be light shelves on the inside, on the outside. You have to come up with these um, at least three different options to test and to compare. So um, this can actually could be exported as a diagram just like that, especially when you have more. So we copy as bitmap, we open Photoshop, we drop it in there. We can also maybe we actually make a um, you know a new view. 
that is more of a um, perspectival view. Um, there's actually, but before I do that, no, okay, now we have Photoshop. So let me just um, quickly uh, drop in the screenshot. Sorry, it takes a little little while. This machine is busy. Okay, we have that going back. Um, <coughs> if I go back into the plan, um, just so you. So you can you can play around with the minimum and the maximum. For example, if I set this to 10, I can even get a better sense of the distribution inside of the space. And now I'm starting to see a lot more variation in the back, especially, which may may be interesting. Um, you know, you see kind of a, a random uh, pattern that is just an imprecise nature. If you remember, we didn't run this calculation with the highest precision. If you set that to the highest, you'll get a more even uh, distribution. But even if we if this remains at 15, um, you can turn off the grid lines right here at the grid settings. It gives you a, gives you a, a different um, kind of visual effect. Um, you definitely want to have the grid square shaded. If you have the contour lines, you basically are going to smooth it out. You, know, you can also just have the contour lines. So these are these are the lines of where these different um, you know percentages change. Clip to minimum, uh, show grid axis, show node values. These are like the daylight factor at each at each kind of node, um, and that's pretty. These are pretty much the most important ones. I I usually find that uh, this is the best um, way to look at this, or maybe turn it turn it off and turn on the uh, the contour lines to get it smoother, or have have everything on top of each other. So um, this is really a personal preference. And you can, um, I want to make this view a little bit better just uh, visually. So I'm going to take the section plane down a bit so I see more of the actual, and then maybe looking a little bit more like that. Don't forget to update this view so that when you go back between the different ones, it saves the settings. Okay, another screenshot, putting it into Photoshop. And um, we have uh, created this uh, daylight factor diagram. 